Hello everybody, I'm Sob and Lore bringing you more Magic the Gathering Lore. Well, Christmas Eve is here friends, and that means we only have two cards left in this Cards of Christmas series. Let's not despair and continue with card number 24, Heliod, God of the Sun. On the dawning of Theros, there was but one god who came before all others, and this god was Heliod. Before Nyx even held a pantheon, Heliod casted his light onto the world and made what we now refer to as Theros. He is the most powerful of the gods, holding unquestionable dominion over Nyx and a majority of the praise from mortal worshippers. Heliod embodies the aspects of justice, law, bonds of kinship, and retribution. His presence presides over matters of honor, morality, virtue, marriages, bravery, speeches, self-sacrifice, and even breakfast. His name is often used to begin legal ceremonies, and his blessing is requested at times when the greatest aid is required. Heliod is a god of many hats. He exists in almost every aspect of decency and the common good. His presence in the sky provides the very light the mortals on Theros see every day. This is why Heliod is most often referred to as the most praised god in the pantheon. In his presence, Heliod appears as he does in the skies. He is glowing and brimming with brilliance and awe. He is quick to form friendships and bonds, and often sees himself as an ally to all mortals on the plane. Yet, this god has some personality flaws which few know and even fewer ever talk about. Heliod is quick to retribution should anyone slander his name. He is overly prideful and full of self-assurance, causing him to take criticism poorly. Those who have witnessed this god's darker side knows that these great bonds he so easily forms are also so easily broken. He has no true loyalty though he is toted for this characteristic. Those he claims to be his allies one day could easily be the target of his wrath the next. It is also said that his presence in the skies above Theros serves to give light to those mortals who praise Heliod. Yet in reality, Heliod is using the light to block the vision of mortals. He believes that the heavenly realm of Nyx is too great to be seen by these lesser eyes, so he blocks it out with his light. When seeking retribution, Heliod uses his weapon known as Crusar, the Sun Spear. This spear, forged from pure light, can be pitched down from the heavens to any location on Theros. It is said that Heliod used the spear to cast an entire city into the seas, and its citizens became the Tritons on Theros. Those who worship Heliod consist mainly of humans and centaurs, for those beings have the strongest concept of justice and honor. Yet this is not to say that his only worshippers are these two races. Heliod gains respect and acknowledgement from all life on Theros through the light he produces. There are many ways the mortals on Theros pay homage to this god. Many hold a celebration in Heliod's name on the first daylight of every month. This is to ensure that light shines on them for the following days to come. Many families also pay daily respects to the sun god by winking towards the cresting sun on daybreak. His temples are built with huge platforms which lead up to open courtyards designed for sun worship and also holds the largest ceremonies dedicated to Heliod. The greatest of these would be the celebration of the Summer Solstice Holiday. During this three-day celebration, mortals gather for feasts, weddings, and oaths of loyalty. Despite all the praises Heliod receives, his darker side conflicts with all that he is said to stand for. His loyalty lacks any type of substance, and he is hardly the most honorable being on Theros. These characteristics would play a huge role in the story of Theros, especially in regards to the planeswalker Elspeth Tyrell. Heliod and the rest of the gods of the Pantheon would go on to play substantial roles in Theros' storyline. I hope to bring you this incredible story in full after the holiday season, but until then, I hope that understanding the personalities of these gods will allow you to better understand how they affected Theros. In any case, there you go guys, the lore behind Heliod, God of the Sun, and the 24th card of Christmas. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and make sure you return tomorrow for the last card of Christmas. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.